you want to make donuts like this? Yeah. Yeah. But wait, it's 14 parts. Who wants to do all of that? So here we go. Nearly five hours of content condensed into however many minutes. Part one, download Blender. Part two, shift A, add a torus, make it fat. Right click, shade smooth, go to modifiers, add subdivision surface. Now into edit mode, press O, select a vertex. G and drag your mouse a few times until it's a bit lumpy. Scroll up or down to change its strength, press O again when you're done. The base should be starting to look good already, but it's going to get so much better. Now to make it flatter on the sides, alt click on an edge, press S to scale it down. Also make sure you press Control S to save. Now I'm regularly in the future because you don't want to lose all your hard work. Part 3, Icing. Shift D on the torus, right click to cancel the movement. Name one donut on the other icing. With the icing object selected, press tab for edit mode. Press numpad 1, Z, and then box select the bottom half. X to delete vertices, tab back into object mode, add solidifier modifier, and change offset to 1. Also apply the sub D, press tab O with the snapping button and change it to face project. Before we make the icing drip, go to the middle of the donut, alt click this and control plus a few times. Press H, now select a vertex from the bottom of icing. G, Z and drag it down. Do this a few times all over to get a nice wavy uneven pattern. Also extrude some bits down really far with E after you selected a couple vertices. Alt H and fix up any weird vertices. Once that's done, tab back into object mode. Add a subdivision modifier under the solidifier. While you're here on the solidifier, go to edge data and change crease inner to 1. Part 4. Add shrink wrap modifier and eye drop the donut and move it up to the top and apply it. Then apply the solidify and apply the sub D. Go to sculpt mode, press I for inflate brush. Remember F to make it bigger, shift F to make it stronger. Use the brush to make the ends bulge. G for the grab brush and exaggerate the design. M for the mask brush and paint across the rim. Control I, press mask, smooth mask, and then go to mesh filter brush with inflate and do it a little bit. You can use the smooth brush if you need as well. Part 5, add a new material, make it pink, roughness to 0.3. For the base, add a material, make it an orange yellow. Add a plane, scale it up, click the icing and shift click the donut, control P, object keep, transform. Move it up to just above the plane. For the plane, add a material, click the dot and image texture. To get a texture, you can go to polygon.com and download his marble texture, and then use the main image. Go to shading tab, add an image texture and map it to the roughness, and use the image with the roughness in the name. Change the color space to non-color, another image texture for the normal input with the purple image and non-color. Add a normal map in between the image texture and output and normal input. Now go to texture pane and forward slash to isolate the donut. In material tab, change it to the image texture with the color similar to what you had before. Select it and choose a slightly lighter color than the base and paint with a low strength around the middle. Once it's done, image and save. Part 6, Geometry Nodes Workspace. Remove the spreadsheet with a right click, join areas, and click here. With icing selected, click new, shift A, distribute points on faces. Shift A, join geometry goes after it, and output of original mesh goes into it. Add a new UV sphere mesh, make it 12 by 8 segments or even lower resolution, and scale to 0.01. Drag the sphere object into the geometry nodes, add instance on points, and add it after distribute points on faces. Put the geometry from object info into instance. For distribute points on faces, change it to Poisson disk. Distance min to 0.013, go to weight paint mode, change the vertex group name if you want, drag out density factor to a named attribute, and however you like. Also shade smooth the sprinkles. You can also expose the property like this so it can be custom for each donut. Back in layout, select everything apart from the camera and light. Press S, type 0.1, then control A scale. Now you need to fix the value, so density should be a lot more and distance min around 0.001, but to make density right, you can use math nodes or multiply with a value like 1000 and just 200 for the actual value. I feel like each one of these tutorials is taking longer and longer. Part 7, halfway there, now we want to make the sprinkles. Add a cylinder with super low radius and depth. Vertices at 12, press N, view. Clip start to 0.001, tab SZ, select top and bottom face, control B to bevel, scroll up twice, make a couple more that are a bit longer with GZ on the top vertices. Make a curved one by duplicating again with shift D. And this time in edit mode, use Control R to create around 8 cuts by scrolling up and left click and then right click. Add a simple deform modifier on bend to make it bend with around 30 degrees. Select all your sprinkles, right click, set origin, origin to geometry. Apply the simple deform, create new collections for the sprinkles with a round and long within using this button. Move the sphere into round, select all your long sprinkles, press M and choose the long selection. Select donut and icing, press M, new collection and call it donuts. Then the other original one can be called environment. Select the icing in donut, shift D, X and move it across on the new donut's icing. Click the two button on its geometry nose modifier to make it independent. 
bringing in the left one to round sprinkles and the right one to long sprinkles. In the long sprinkles geometry nodes, delete the spin object node and drag the long sprinkles collection to where you put it into the instance input instead. Check these three boxes to make it work. Now you want to fix the rotation, so connect the two rotation boxes, go to the original sprinkles RX90 to rotate it 90 degrees, and apply the rotation, but it still doesn't work all the way, so you need to do shift rotate EULA. Not EULA, EULA. In between the rotation connections and put it on local. Drag out, rotate, buy, and get random value. For the max, change the bottom to the tau. Yes, just type that word in, and for the top one at 0.5. Change the scale to 1.5 and, and change the distance min to 0.006 for some bigger sprinkles. Part 8. Add the sprinkles material to one of the sprinkles. Shift select the others and shift select the original again. Control L link materials. In shading tab, object info node. Random into base color. Then with a color ramp, select a couple colors and change it to constant. Use the plus button to add new colors for different areas. Once that's done, control shift D the color ramp. Plug the new one into metallic and make most of it black with the top area white. Duplicate it again. Control shift D and plug into metallic. Then change white one to almost entirely black and black one to a lot lighter. Back in layout, number pad 0 to camera view, and with camera selected, shift tilde, you go into fly mode to use WASD to position the camera correctly, and mouse to scroll to change sensitivity. Left click once it's there, change the render engine to cycles, device to GPU compute, and in edit preferences system, try switching to a different tab and see what happens with your device. And if you can render with it to be quicker, and turn on denoise, select the light, alt G, and then G, move it away from middle so it's still close, decrease strength to 20. On material, on icing, go to subsurface and change weight one all radius values to one scale to 0.005 same thing with sprinkles but scale 0.002 part 9 make a plate add a circle with 100 vertices e z then s a little bit press e right click and s scale it out again e z and s scale it out alt click on the first circle and press f to make a face edge select mode alt click on edges control b scroll up bevel them all a little bit add solidify thickness 0.004 and apply it select top two edge loops control b press c for clamp overlap and drag all the way as far as it will go press a m choose by distance to clean vertices shade the plate smooth and make sure it doesn't overlap the countertop a lot camera viewport display 0.1 now shift key the donuts a few times moving them around making the stack look natural with some rotation and using r and then z twice to rotate them on their local axis and have a donut rotated towards the camera mix around which ones are long round and no sprinkles duplicate the plane and rotate it for a background change the color for each icing by clicking the number and changing the base color add a material to the plate decrease its roughness and add a subsurface with scale 0.001 color is slightly less white and a bit yellow part 10 lighting delete the light on the world tab use sky texture and put the sun rotation to the left and minus 90 degrees in render color management exposure set it to minus 2 back in the sky texture set the sun size to 2.4 also make the background a bit bigger and further back add a cube make it bigger and press g and then b take the bottom corner of the cube and then of the plane in face select use the same method to snap the other faces to the planes apart from the back face which has space for the camera delete the back and bottom faces of the cube select a face on the side press i to inset then x and faces to delete the face move around the window edges to control how the light looks on the cube add a white walls material and use the plus button to add another material for black wall with a diffuse shader and a, ba and a black base color in edit mode select one wall and assign the black wall material to it so that there's less bounce light Set sun intensity to 0.5. To import a model after you download it online, use file append the collection and move it to the back of the scene. To install an add-on, download it from online. Don't unzip and go to edit preferences, add-ons and install. Then check it to use where it normally is in the sidebar. You can add some vegetation to the background using an add-on like Polygon that he uses. Part 11, compositing. First, some improvements to the lighting. Add an area light with size 0.2 pointing towards the donut from the right. Decrease its strength with the yellow tint. Now compositing, go to compositor tab with use nodes checked, also render the image with max samples 100. In compositor, control left click on renderer to add a viewer node. In your render settings, in color management, change the look to medium high contrast and put exposure up a bit to minus 1.6. Although this is a value you will constantly mess with and in the end it's minus 2.2. In compositor, add glare node with 16 streaks. Mix 1 and threshold 30, control shift D, and in the new one change it to fog glow with a size of 9 and high quality. Blend them with a mixed color node on add and factor 0.01, then duplicate it and put it into the bottom input, which the top one is the original image, and factor 0.15. 
last known as lens distortion, with distortion 0.01 and dispersion which is chromatic aberration at 0.005. Part 12, animation. In layout, drag out from the bottom to see the animation timeline, shift right click to put the cursor in the middle of the donuts. Add a sphere empty and scale it down, select camera, shift select empty, control P, object keep transformed to parent like before, go to frame 160 with empty selected, and press I to keyframe, select rotation, go to frame 1 and rotate the empty, minus 90 degrees on X axis, then keyframe rotation with I, to make the animation smoother go to animation tab, delete Y and Z, rotation then change window type to graph editor, press home key to reset view, Rotate starting keyframe with R to be faster, and scale endpoint out with S to be slower, make the camera zoom out, go to frame 160, press I and scale to add keyframe, and again at frame 1 with the scale a lot smaller. Press normalize to see the scale graph better and do the same changes for it. In render properties, frame rate to 30fps and end frame to 160. Part 13, rendering. Change the max samples in render to 500 and uncheck noise threshold in our output settings. Keep the format as PNG or change to TIFF. Choose an output folder and create a folder within for your frames. Before you render, there is a few things to check. In solid view, check this button to see face orientation. If there's red, select everything on that mesh in edit mode, press shift N. If it still doesn't fix it, then click the box and check inside. Turn face orientation off once it's done. Make sure to uncheck the camera icon on the sprinkles collection so the individual objects don't appear in the render. Look at the donuts from every angle and make sure the stuff doesn't intersect. Add an area light on the ceiling to make everything a bit lighter. To check the lighting and colour management, change the look to false colour and try to get a good range of brightness without too much red or white. Put subsurface scattering on the donut with the same method, and this time a scale of 0.01. Add a few big sprinkles with a UV sphere to that so there are some medium details. In the world settings, decrease air and dust to 0.7. Select your camera data and check depth of field and choose the front donut as the focus object. Change the f-stop to 7. In render settings, check motion blur. Make sure your area light and big sprinkles are in the correct collections of the ones that will render. And then finally, you can hit render, render animation, and wait a few days for it to finish. Part 14, finale. So to turn this image sequence into a video, you can use Premiere Pro by pressing Ctrl I, going to the folder, clicking on the first image, and checking image sequence. But if you want a free way to do it in Blender, you can go to File, New, Video Editing, and in here, Shift-A, Image Sequence, and go to the folder, select the first one, press A to select the rest, and add Image Sequence. If you press Space, it plays, change frame rate to 30 FPS, click the M frame and drag it out to frame 250 at the end so it holds the last frame. Fade out by adding a colour, clicking it, and adding a fade in with Shift-A, while the colour is selected. Then to make this a video, choose another folder for the output, have the file format as FFmpeg video, in video output quality make it perceptually lossless. Then you can go to render, render animation where it will render really quickly to get you your final video. He also gives some challenges you can try once you've finished, so if you want to check that out I'll put an end card with his final video where he goes over that. But before that, if you want to improve it really, click the top link in the description, you will get access to a free community that I've made just for that. Apart from that, I hope you learned something and enjoyed.